Just one minute ago, scientists confirmed what officials have been downplaying. Campi Flegre's crust is fracturing, and a new fault, angled at 53 degrees beneath half a million people, has turned Italy's sleeping giant into a ticking time bomb. This isn't just about tremors. It's the recipe for critical failure, and still no evacuation, nothing. Why are the warnings being softened, and what happens when the cap finally breaks? Italian civil protection authorities issue bulletins at regular intervals, each one carrying the weight of official reassurance. These updates are crafted with language that leans toward caution, never alarm. Phrases like, the current unrest remains within expected parameters, and no immediate escalation of alert levels is warranted, appear again and again, even as the number of recorded earthquakes surpasses 54,000 in just three years. The bulletins reference technical criteria, yet rarely highlight the dramatic reorganization of seismic activity or the rapid ground uplift, now approaching 1.4 meters in some neighborhoods. Behind closed doors, requests from local officials for contingency plan updates are met with delays. The emergency plan, required by protocol to reflect the latest scientific findings, remains unchanged through the spring and summer of 2025, despite a record-setting magnitude 4.6 earthquake and clear evidence of a newly mapped fault at depth. Regional leaders point to ongoing review cycles and the need to avoid unnecessary panic. Drafts circulate in municipal offices, but no final version is released to the public or distributed to the communities most at risk. Scientists from INGV, the National Geophysics Institute, submit detailed reports on seismic clustering and fault geometry. Their findings are acknowledged in technical annexes, yet the main bulletins summarize only that monitoring continues and the situation is under evaluation. In interviews, Researchers hint at frustration, not with outright censorship, but with the inertia of bureaucratic process. We provide the data. Decisions about risk communication are not ours to make, says one senior analyst. Local media, too, press for clarity. Journalists request access to the full sequence of draft bulletins and the timeline of emergency plan revisions, but receive only the final, sanitized versions. Public meetings yield polite assurances not concrete timelines. Residents in Pozzuoli and Naples wait for actionable guidance, while the official message remains fixed. Stay calm, stay informed, trust the process. The gap between what is known and what is shared grows wider. As pressure builds beneath the caldera, the machinery of official communication moves at its own pace, measured, methodical, and always a step behind the data. Half a million people live inside the Campi Flegre red zone, not scattered across countryside or tucked away in distant villages, but packed into one of the densest urban mosaics on the planet. Pozzuoli, Bacoli, Quarto, the western edge of Naples. Every street, every apartment block, every school and market sits on ground that is literally rising beneath their feet. The numbers are almost impossible to picture, 500,000 residents, more than the entire population of Atlanta or Copenhagen, all concentrated inside an area smaller than the city of Paris. This isn't some remote volcano surrounded by empty fields. It's a modern city, alive with morning traffic, children walking to class, grandparents tending gardens on cracked patios. The caldera's rim curves invisibly through neighborhoods that have grown up over centuries, layer upon layer, until the old Roman ruins and medieval churches are hemmed in by apartment towers and supermarkets. Every square kilometer holds nearly 5,000 people. In some districts, it's double that. Think of it like a souffle, so crowded and delicate that the slightest shake could send the whole thing collapsing. The ground underfoot is swelling two centimeters higher each month, more than a meter in just a few years. The pressure is building beneath a city that cannot move. There are no empty lots, no broad escape routes, no way to simply clear the danger zone. Most families have lived here for generations. They know the stories, how the ground once rose so fast that doorsteps became cliffs, 
how cracks split the roads after the big quakes of the 80s. But the scale of risk now is something new. If the worst happens, evacuation would mean moving half a million people through narrow streets and tangled traffic, all with only hours notice. No other super volcano in the world has this many people living right on top of it. Not Yellowstone, not Toba, not Taupo. Campi Flegre is unique. A city balanced on a trembling, rising crust with every resident part of a living experiment in volcanic risk. The souffle keeps lifting, and the city above it holds its breath. In the autumn of 1538, the landscape west of Naples changed forever. For years, the ground near Pozzuoli had been rising, inch by inch, as if something massive was swelling beneath the earth. People noticed the wells drying up and new cracks zigzagging across the fields. Then, over the course of just seven days, the world split open. Earthquakes rattled the countryside, each one sharper than the last, until the ground finally tore apart. Steam and ash erupted from the fissures, hurling rocks skyward and turning day into night. By the end of that week, a new mountain stood where farmland had been, Monte Nuovo, the youngest volcano in Europe, born in less than 200 hours. The sequence was brutally simple, months of ground uplift, a sudden burst of earthquakes, then a violent eruption. No one had warning, not really. The signs were there, but the speed of the final escalation caught everyone by surprise. The caldera, already a fractured bowl from ancient super eruptions, proved it could still move fast, transforming a quiet bay into a volcanic crater in less than the time it takes to bake a loaf of bread. Monte Nuovo's cone rose more than 130 meters in a single week. Ash buried the villages of Tripergole and part of Lucrino erasing them from the map. The eruption forced thousands to flee, but many, but many stayed until the last possible moment, watching as their homes vanished under pumice and mud. The caldera itself is enormous, 12 kilometers across. So the birth of a new volcano inside its rim was like a warning shot. The earth here doesn't just tremble it can remake itself overnight. What happened in 1538 is not just a story for textbooks. It's a reminder that in a place like Campi Flegre, the line between normal life and disaster can be razor thin. The entire episode unfolded before the age of modern science with no sensors, no bulletins, no evacuation plans, just the raw power of geology on display. Today, the scars of Monte Nuovo are still visible, a permanent record of how quickly the ground can turn against half a million people living above it. 54,000 micro-earthquakes. That's not a typo. That's the number logged beneath Campi Flegre since the unrest phase accelerated, far more than traditional networks ever, networks ever caught. The reason? A seismic catalog powered by artificial intelligence run by a team at INGV in Stanford, is now picking up events so faint, so tightly clustered, that old-school methods would have missed them entirely. This isn't just a bigger list of quakes. It's a map of the invisible. A eye-driven waveform clustering and relocation have traced out a slanted fault plane slicing through the caldera. A 53-degree dip running from west-southwest to east-northeast, right beneath Pozzuoli. The team's algorithm sifted through continuous seismic data, grouping micro-events by their unique fingerprints, then recalculated their locations with a margin of error under 300 meters. When the points were plotted, the pattern was too sharp to ignore. More than half of recent seismicity now lines up along a single, coherent surface. The scientists didn't stop at cataloging. They ran 3D seismic tomography. Think of it as an ultrasound for the Earth, layering velocity models over the fault. The result? A thin, brittle plane, four to five kilometers long, cutting through both dense tough and altered weaker rock. Focal mechanism analysis shows most events are normal, 
or oblique normal, matching the direction of ground stretching as the caldera lifts. AI didn't just reveal the fault's existence, it caught the migration of seismicity onto this plane as ground uplift increased. Animated cross-sections show quakes marching laterally and vertically, keeping pace with the swelling crust. This isn't random creaking anymore. It's organized cracking, and the fault's geometry has been confirmed by multiple independent models. One researcher put it plainly, the data are as clear as we've ever seen. The AI team's confidence comes from agreement across methods. Dense waveform networks, advanced clustering, and tomographic imaging all point to the same structure. There are still blind spots, especially offshore, but for the first time, the machinery beneath Campi Flegre is being mapped in real time, in three dimensions, with a level of detail that brings both clarity and a new kind of dread. The invisible is now visible, and the numbers don't lie. The seismic maps no longer show a random scatter of tiny quakes. Instead, more than half of all recent earthquakes now align along a single, sharply defined plane, slanting beneath Pozzuoli at a 53-degree angle. This is not a theoretical model. It's a pattern confirmed by tens of thousands of relocated events, each one pinpointed by AI with a margin of error smaller than the length of a city block. The fault stretches four to five kilometers, slicing through the brittle cap rock like a seam in a cracked eggshell. Lab tests on rock cores from this depth reveal a sobering truth. The cap rock, once strong enough to hold back the pressure of the entire hydrothermal system, has lost more than two-thirds of its original strength since the 1980s. Decades of chemical alteration, heat, and relentless pressurization have left it weakened, riddled with microfractures, and far more likely to fail. The numbers are not comforting. The critical pressure needed to break the cap rock is now somewhere between 45 and 74 megapascals. That's a narrow band, just a bit more pressure, and the lid could give way. This isn't a gradual process. When the rock finally shifts from elastic bending to brittle fracture, the transition is sudden, like a balloon that stretches until it can't stretch anymore, then snaps in an instant. The new fault acts as a ready-made pathway, a vertical slot connecting the deep pressurized reservoir to the shallow crust. If slip occurs along the entire mapped surface, models suggest a maximum earthquake in the M4.8 to M5.3 range, enough to cause real damage in a city this dense and potentially enough to trigger fluid or even magma movement upward. The geometry of the fault is what makes it so dangerous. It cuts through both dense volcanic tuff and weaker, altered rock, linking zones of highest uplift with areas of thinned cap rock. Stress modeling shows that as ground inflation pushes upward, the pressure focuses directly onto this fault plane. Every additional centimeter of uplift brings the system closer to the rupture threshold. AI-driven seismic catalogs, 3D tomography, and field rock physics all converge on the same conclusion. The crust beneath Campi Flegre is organized, strained, and now fundamentally compromised. The lid is holding, but only just. Every new earthquake, every day of uplift, is a roll of the dice. Ground level in Pozzuoli has risen almost a meter and a half since the early 2000s. That's not a rounding error. It's a shift you can measure against the curb, the doorstep, the cracks in the sidewalk. Satellite radar, INSAR, tracks every millimeter. The latest data show the ground swelling by two centimeters every month with the highest point, Rioni Terra, now 1.46 meters above where it started. It's not an even lift. Some buildings lean, others twist, roads buckle, water pipes snap, and old stone walls split open like bread left too long in the oven. The numbers are more than lines on a graph. Each uptick in ground level means more pressure pushing up from below. In 2023, a magnitude 4.2 earthquake rattled the city awake before dawn. By 2025, the biggest quake so far, a magnitude 4.4, cracked plaster, 
shattered shop windows, and left hospital corridors crowded with nervous families. Schools closed for inspections. In some neighborhoods, people slept in cars or tents, afraid another shock would bring the ceiling down. Residents talk about the changes in daily life. Madalena Desario, who grew up in Pozzuoli, says she checks her kitchen tiles every morning for new fissures. Her neighbor's garden wall now tilts at a strange angle. Local shopkeepers keep a broom near the door, sweeping up bits of fallen plaster after each tremor. The old-timers remember the Brady season of the 1980s, how they watched their doorsteps sink and rise, how evacuation drills turned into traffic jams and confusion. But the pace now is faster, the damage more relentless. There's a sense of waiting, of holding on. Half a million people live with this tension. The ground doesn't just shake. It rises month after month, a slow motion warning that no one can ignore. For some, the fear is constant. For others, it's just part of life. But everyone knows the numbers. 1.46 meters up, two centimeters more every month and still no sign of relief. The city keeps moving, but the ground beneath it moves faster. Over 500,000 people currently live inside Campi Flegre's Red Zone, as documented by Italy's civil protection records. In the past year alone, ground uplift has reached 1.46 meters, rising at 2 centimeters per month, numbers confirmed by INSAR satellite data. Scientists have mapped more than 50% of recent seismic events along a single 53-degree fault plane beneath the caldera, with experimental results showing the cap rock has already lost two-thirds of its original strength. Despite these findings, official contingency plans remain under revision, and evacuation protocols have not been updated since 2016. The 1538 Monte Nuovo eruption proved that rapid escalation is possible within days. Yet, Key questions remain. Will the new fault act as a pathway for magma? And how close is the system to critical failure? What is clear from all available evidence is that the system's limits are being tested in real time. The documents, satellite images, and seismic records leave no doubt. The risk is present, and the window for action is narrowing.